Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Glam Bodybuilding, and today I'm going to talk to you from the garage, from the gym, right? Because uh, outside it's raining a lot, so if you're hearing rain hit the pavement out there, it's, it's not me wetting myself, just so you know. It's just the rain is outside the garage. I'm sorry for the disturbance. I know some of you guys can't stand any extraneous noises in the videos. So that's what happens when rain hits the ground. It splatters. So today I'm gonna to answer a question. Somebody just asked in the comments about circuit training and whether circuit training is a good idea or not. Now the context of which this person asked was, if they're doing circuit training, would it be a good way of building muscle mass, assuming the person was taking adequate rest in between sets? Now I've seen people train like this before and funny enough, that's the way I trained in the first two to three years of my, my programs. When I was a teenager, that's actually how I trained. I start off with some bench presses, then I go to some arm curls, then I do some shoulders, then I do some back. I mean, it was, it was kind of like a big dog's breakfast of a workout. But what I did was give myself adequate rest to make sure my breath returned to normal between each exercise, therefore maintaining the fact that I was making sure my muscles were hitting failure, not necessarily my cardio. So the big mistake a lot of people would make in a circuit type of training, if they're looking for muscle mass anyway, is that they would not take adequate rest so they're cardio would start to become more taxed and therefore their muscles wouldn't really hit failure. It's more like they're fighting for breath the whole time. So either way of training is good, just each one will cause a different form of adaptation in the body. And if muscle mass is your primary goal, then you would want to make sure that you rest at least a minute in between sets, right? Maybe a minute and a half, maybe a minute. One could argue that you won't need quite as much rest because you are training a different body part than the one you trained before. So say I go from bench presses to arm curls. Well, there's not a lot of bicep activity in bench pressing. There might be some, you know, isometrically speaking from stabilizing the shoulder and that sort of thing. But once your breath returns to normal after bench pressing, which would take about a minute, you could probably just go right to bicep curls and not really feel hindered because of going to failure on the bench press. So in this way, I do believe 100% that circuit training is not a bad idea and it may break up the monotony of your training and at the same time, give you just another way of taxing the overall system because one of the possible advantages of this is that you are making sure you're hitting the body evenly, right? So say normally you start a chest, back and arm day and your chest is absolutely exhausted by the time you get to back, well, one could argue that you used a lot of your energy, a lot of your nervous system energy and your uh, motivation in the, those first five sets on chest, and therefore your back training suffers minutely, maybe, maybe a lot, I don't know, it depends on the person. But when you do a circuit form of training, one could say that, hey, you're, you're more likely to evenly distribute the energy amongst the different body parts. Now, again, this is, this is all, subjective it's all uh more about what makes you interested in showing up in the gym and sometimes let's face it sometimes switching things up doing something different just hitting things from a different angle or taxing the body in a different way can make it a little bit more interesting yeah you know so so on that note yeah i would just recommend that if you're going to be doing circuit training you may notice if you're including legs into the training you may notice that you'll need more rest from a set of legs than say a set of bicep curls and so forth. So if you're gonna be doing this circuit, don't be surprised if you, know, you, you go to failure on squats or close to failure that you need at least two minutes in order to get that breath back to normal before you go to bicep curls or shoulders or something like that. But again, it's, it's all subjective, right? It just depends on you. Depends on whether you feel that you can put 100% effort into uh, taking those muscle fibers to failure or not. And if you have the energy to do that and you have the breath to do it, then by all means just you know calibrate your rest time as needed. One of the possible benefits of circuit training is that you would be taking a bit less rest in between sets so overall your workout may be shorter because by the time you come around to chest training say you're doing bench presses you're doing back you're doing shoulders you're doing arms and everything the chest has had adequate rest to replenish that creatine store and replenish that glycogen replenish that energy so therefore you can push yourself to failure without you taking a long rest in between successive sets of bench presses, 
right? Because by the time you go through four body parts, you've got, you know, at least five or six or, or eight minutes before you come back around the training chest again. So that should be adequate rest in order for the chest to replenish the energy stores. On that note, yeah, you may end up shaving five, 10 minutes off of your workout because you are training in a circuit. And for some of you who are looking to be super efficient in the gym, that might be something you wanna do for a period of time just because you, you need that extra time in the day because you're, you're busy go-getters or whatever it is you're doing. Building snowmen outside, you know what I mean? And you, you, need, to, you need to concentrate on your snowman making skills or something, yeah. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, circuit training can be a valid technique. It's definitely something that bodybuilders have been using on and off for a long time. Sometimes they do mini circuits, such as just two body parts, or sometimes they'll use a number of different body parts in an overall circuit. I have found that I don't train that way often, but I have done it from time to time, and mostly just to mix it up mentally, just to basically make things a little bit more interesting and to uh, focus moving that blood around the body quite a bit, right? Now you could do the opposite of concentrating the blood just in one area, which somebody else asked about just a little while ago, and that can also be a valid technique. But like I've said a million times, I like to work with the polarity. Sometimes I like to super concentrate uh, blood and fatigue and exhaustion in one area, and then sometimes it's neat to put it through the overall system, like the whole body, to, to stimulate the body itself, right? So yeah, play around with this, see if you like it, and uh, yeah. Uh, sometimes when you're training in a garage like I am, it is neat to apply certain techniques like this just to make it seem like a lot more diversity and a lot more interesting things are happening because of course at a home gym, you don't necessarily have the same equipment available as you do in a gym as well. So that's another advantage of circuit training. Mountain. So yeah, I hope this helps out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgrandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Mountain. Natural land.